Hello everybody and welcome back to Synapse. This is Ritika and in this video we will learn about the development of nervous system and the next few videos will be on neurology and neuroanatomy. Let us start with two, two layered stage of the embryo and understand the development of notochord and the neuroectoderm and the further development of the nervous system. So over here we have the columnar ectoderm and the cuboidal endoderm. Just for the orientation, there is amniotic fluid on this side and there is yolk sac on this side. On the ventral, uh, and this is a cross-sectional view. On the ventral view is just a sheet of cells. On 14th day of gestation, some of the cells of the endoderm change from cuboidal to columnar morphology. And this region is called as the prochordal plate. And on a ventral view, you can see the prochordal plate, something like this. And this marks the head end of the embryo. Soon after the formation of the prochordal plate, there's formation of primitive streak, where some amount of the ectodermal cells proliferates to form a bulging called the primitive streak. And this is towards the caudal end of the embryo. The cells proliferating in the primitive streak spreads out between the ectodermal and the endodermal layer, forming the intraembryonic mesoderm. So now the embryo is in three layered stage where you have the ectoderm, mesoderm and the endoderm. But what you need to note over here is that at the prochordal plate, the ectoderm and the endoderm are in contact with each other the mesoderm does not separate your ectoderm and endoderm at the prochordal plate and this prochordal plate becomes the buccopharyngeal membrane as the development progresses as the embryo becomes bigger the primitive streak becomes longer and the cranial tip or the cranial end of the primitive streak becomes like a node called the primitive node and finally, here comes what we are originally interested in in this video, that is the notochord formation. It develops between the cranial end of the primitive node and the prochordal plate. The cells from the primitive node multiplies and uh, travels or it forms the notochord between your prochordal plate and the primitive node. It indeed undergoes several morphological changes until it comes to the final stage of notochord, which is not so important in this video. If you want, I'll make a separate video on the entire process of notochord formation. Let me know in the comment box. Now, let us look at the formation of the neural tube. The neural tube that develops is going to uh, develop into the central nervous system, that is your brain and the spinal cord. So, from here on, we're going to look at a cross section perpendicular to the cross section seen previously. Okay, so here we have the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the notochord. Here will be your endoderm. So the ectoderm overlying the notochord differentiates, and this becomes a neuroectoderm. So this is what uh, is going to develop into the neural tube and then into the central nervous system, while what is on the periphery. That is still the surface ectoderm okay but only this part becomes the neuroectoderm this is now called the neural plate this entire neural tube formation starts from third week of gestation third week after fertilization sorry and the next thing is that this neural plate deepens to become the neural groove along with that the ectodermal cells at the junction of the neuroectoderm and the surface ectoderm starts protruding out and this forms the neural crest cells. And as you can see, the mesoderm is slowly developing alongside the neural tube and forms the somites. Further on, the neuroectoderm becomes further deeper and the two ends of the surface ectoderm comes closer to close and separate out the neuroectoderm from the surface ectoderm to form the neural tube. And along with that, you have the neural crest cells coming to lie beside your neural tube. The entire process of the surface ectoderm 
the tips of the surface ectoderm coming together and the neuroectoderm separating from the surface ectoderm does not occur at the same time throughout the length of the neural tube. It starts in the cervical region as shown in this picture here and it spreads cranially and caudally. Okay, it closes like that. So the opening that you can see on, at the top over here this is called as the anterior neuropore and the opening that you see below it's called as the posterior neuropore the anterior neuropore has to close on time for the brain to develop normally and the posterior neuropore has to close normally at the right time for the development of spinal cord the anterior neuropore normally closes by 25th day after fertilization and the posterior neuropore closes on 27 to 28th day after fertilization. So what happens if the neural tube does not form properly and if it does not close properly? Anencephaly, rachiskiasis and we have spina bifida. So anencephaly, it is when the anterior neuropore does not close properly that your brain mainly does not develop properly. The first image here shows an encephaly where the brain is exposed and it is degenerated. Rachiskiasis is when the posterior neuropore does not close or, or the entire length of the neural tube does not close. The second Im image here shows that the entire neural tube it is exposed or it is open to the dorsum of this fetus. The last thing to be discussed in this video is spina bifida where along with the non-fusion of the neural tube there is also non-fusion of the vertebra because of the non-fusion of the vertebra you have a bifid vertebra and that is why it is called a spina bifida you have types of spina bifida could be spina bifida occulta where nothing is seen externally Although the vertebra is not fused, but nothing is seen externally, maybe sometimes there could be tuft of hair seen on the skin on the outside. And it's usually an incidental finding. Then you have the meningocele and the myelomeningocele. As the name itself says, meningocele only means that the meninges have protruded out and it is a clear cyst. And when you aspirate, you get clearer CSF. Milo meningocele is where milo meaning the neural tissue. So there is meninges and the neural tissues found in the cyst. And uh, it is usually seen as not a clear cyst where you can see markings on the cyst. You can see dark lines on the cyst when it is a milo meningocele. In the presence of these neural tube defects in the fetus or in the embryo, the maternal alpha fetoprotein and acetylcholine esterase values are increased. And as a prevention of the neural tube defects, the pregnant mother is given 400 micrograms of folic acid per day perinatally, preferably starting before conception. I'll make another video with the continuation of the development of neural tissue, where I'll take you from the neural tube formation to the final CNS formation, that is the cerebrum, midbrain, pons, medulla, and the cerebellum, the spinal cord, everything. How does each part of it develop from the neural tube, including the ventricle system? I hope you liked this video, and if you did, like the video, share it with all your friends, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet subscribed, and watch out for the next video with the continuation of the development of nervous system. Thank you, and bye-bye.